before you go and send your car, you might want to check some of these things first. You will not need to get the car up in the air or climb under it to do any of this. This is all basic stuff you can do in five minutes on your driveway. You can use it as a baseline for track days, but it's mainly focused on fast road driving. If you haven't subscribed, maybe subscribe. Point number one, your brakes. No point going fast if you can't stop, eh? There are a few checklist items on this list. The most important of which being pads, discs, and fluid. You can actually check the condition of your pads without getting the car up in the air. Now this is assuming your pads are wearing evenly. What a lot of people don't realize is that you have a brake disc and you have a brake pad, but on the other side of the wheel, you have another brake disc and another pad. So you can check the outside one quite easily just by looking through the spokes on your wheel. And as long as you monitor this and start to think about replacing it as it gets quite low, you'll be absolutely fine. You've got the same situation and the same caveat regarding uneven wear for the brake discs. You can check the amount of lip you have on the outside of the disc. Just run your finger along the brake disc and feel for a lip. The main purpose of brake discs is to dissipate heat. So as they get thinner and thinner, their ability to do that diminishes and therefore your braking performance diminishes. This is super important on a track day, but even for fast road driving, if you're gonna go and blast down a mountain pass, you probably want some brake heat dissipation. The fluid is also important. Over time, fluid breaks down and you need to be replacing this every two to four years based on your car's manual. But if you're driving hard, maybe replace it every one to two years. If you don't have a brand new car, you can probably check your brake fluid very easily just by opening up the bonnet and having a look at the reservoir. Now, if you have a car like mine, you can't actually do this physically. You have to check it in the computer, which is a bit annoying because it's nice to see the color, for example, for yourself. It's definitely something to check, something to keep on top of. The second checklist item for driving fast, tires. I think everybody saw this one coming because it's a fundamental. Probably the most important thing about tires are your tire pressures. If they're not set appropriately, you're gonna have reduced grip, you're gonna have increased wear, you're gonna have a bad day. What pressure you decide to run your tires at is very dependent on what car you have, the weight of it, the size of the tire, your manufacturer's recommendations, and your personal taste in how heavy you like the steering and how you like the chassis to respond. I've got a full video just about tire pressures. You can click up here to watch that full video where I test multiple different tire pressures on the same route. I won't spoil the video, but I'm actually surprised by the one that I preferred. It didn't make a lot of sense, but it felt better. Now you can check your tire pressure quite easily with a tire pressure gauge, but if you don't have one, in the boot or the trunk of your car, there will be some form of tire inflation device. And you can use these to check tire pressures very easily if you don't have the tool to do that. I've seen people use these at track days all the time and they're a great little thing to have in the boot of your car. If you do have a modern car, you can also check the tire pressures in the actual gauge cluster of your car. It's a really, really useful feature on modern cars. You also want to check the tread on your tires visually inspect your tires just to make sure there's no cuts or damage to the tread but you also want to check the tread depth the best way to do this is with a 20 pence coin if you live in the uk the 20 pence piece has the perfect amount of edge around the coin to check your tire tread really useful tip if you live in the uk i would also caveat this is not something that you can put on a checklist but one thing to think going forward if you're into fast driving is your choice of tire. Just because something's a Michelin doesn't mean it's a good fast road tire. If you want my recommendations for tires that are great all round but you can still drive fast on, have a look at the Michelin Pilot Sport 5, have a look at the Eagle Asymmetric 6 by Goodyear, and have a look at the entry level Pirelli tire. I've got these on this car and they're honestly quite good. Now the third checklist item is your suspension. This is the only one on this list that's quite difficult to check without a ramp. 
So realistically, the only way you're gonna be able to check your suspension is by driving the car and feeling for issues. Any little knocks as you go over bumps, any extra rattle sounds that are unusual and sound like they're coming from under the car. Oftentimes, suspension components are quite perishable. For example, the ends of your sway bar or your anti-roll bar will often wear and perish and then your car will roll more than it should. A clear indicator of this is as you're going over a bump, you'll hear a metallic knocking. Same thing with bushes across the chassis and the suspension. Oftentimes front arms, rear arms, subframe, all sorts of stuff will perish, but it's usually quite noticeable. You'll hear this metal on metal contact as you're driving around and going over bumps, especially. Also, have a look at your alignment. If your steering wheel's slightly wonky, this is not a good situation for you to be driving fast. Have a watch of this video up here where I show you the before and after of getting a professional fast road alignment. It absolutely transformed my previous car. You'll be surprised, they charge the same as a normal garage for doing a basic alignment and it will make a big difference. Number four, your engine and drivetrain. There's some really simple things that you can do which will go a long way to prolonging the life of your engine and drivetrain when driving fast. First and fundamentally important is the oil. Stay on top of oil leaks, don't let your car leak oil. Check your oil regularly. This is super easy to do on most cars. You pop up in the bonnet, you pull out the dipstick, you wipe it, you dip it, you check it. It should be between the maximum and minimum lines. If you have a modern car like this one, you're not able to check the dipstick, so just check it in the computer. It's the only way to do it. Make sure you're on a level surface, whether it's you're checking it physically or you're checking it with the computer. Running out of oil will grenade your engine. And generally, the faster you're driving and the harder you're working the engine, you will get a little bit of oil consumption above what you would normally get. So if you like to drive fast, if you do track days, then absolutely. You have to be staying on top of your oil. You have to be checking this stuff because it will get away from you and you will grenade your engine. Same story for coolant. You just have to check the coolant reservoir. Make sure it's at the right level. Change the coolant at the right times. Some cars are every two years. Some cars are every five years. But it's one of those things where, again, it's fairly simple. But if you run out of coolant, your engine will overheat. Bearings will be spun. Bad days will be had. So just make sure you stay on top of that stuff. Look after your car it will look after you. If you have an automatic transmission, you probably also want to every once in a while check the status of the automatic transmission fluid. A lot of people think these are sealed for life and manufacturers say they're good forever. If you're driving the car hard, you will need to replace this automatic transmission fluid. Get involved in the owner's forums of your car if you have a ZF8 speed or a dual clutch automatic box to figure out exactly when those intervals should be. And fifth and finally is the human element. Are you in the right mindset to go and drive fast? Why are you going to drive fast? I have two videos kind of adjacent to this topic. One's called three things you don't understand about driving fast and the other one is called what is spirited driving. In both of those videos I have a mindset topic where I talk about how you should be thinking about driving fast but the highlights are this. If you're feeling angry don't take it out on the throttle pedal because you're putting people at risk. You're not impressing anyone with your fast driving the only reason you should be driving fast is because you enjoy it and it's for you. And you should try and figure out a way to do that without harming everybody else. There's also the physical human element. Is there something that's gonna fall, get stuck in between your pedal and prevent you braking? Little things like that in the interior can be really dangerous and people don't think about them enough. Your box of chewing gum or mints to come flying out the cup holder gets stuck under your brake pedal and you're gonna have a bad day. I love a clean and uncluttered interior. The only thing you will see in my interior is my camera bag, which I have to bring with me to make these videos. But I don't like having things that can move around while I'm cornering, because I'm often cornering quite hard. So that's it. You've got the basic checklist. If you go down and tick off all of these points, your car is ready to be sent. Thanks for watching. My name's Mick. I did not drive a car in this video, but I usually drive cars. Peace.